today I will be discussing about the pharmacology of the drugs which are used in the treatment of bronchial asthma. Now if you take this bronchial asthma, the word asthma in Greek it tells you right it is actually a Greek terminology. The word asthma it tells that it is difficulty in breathing difficulty in breathing it is the meaning of the word asthma in Greek now as such if you take the bronchial asthma it is one of the chronic inflammatory disorder right this is one of the chronic inflammatory disorder now in this particular chronic inflammatory disorder what are the structures which are getting inflamed what are the structures which are getting inflamed in this asthma is mainly your airways right airways they are getting completely inflamed now for the inflammation of this particular airways there are certain cells which play an important role in the inflammation of these particular airways. Now what are those cells which are involved in the inflammation of this airways? These cells they include mast cells. They play a role in the inflammation of this airways. And then eosinophils. And then T lymphocytes. and then T lymphocytes. So these are the cells which play the role of inflammation in bronchial asthma. So these cells they will release the inflammatory mediators and the inflammatory mediators whichever are being released from these cells they will cause the inflammation of this particular airways. Now you take this bronchial asthma this bronchial asthma it is a type of type 1 hypersensitivity reaction right it is a type of type 1 hypersensitivity reaction if you take the hypersensitivity reactions we have actually four types of hypersensitivity reactions out of these four types of hypersensitivity reactions bronchial asthma it is a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction now what exactly you mean by this word type 1 hypersensitivity reactions this type 1 hypersensitivity reactions this is characterized by the formation of IgE antibody right in this type 1 hypersensitivity reactions it is characterized by the formation of IgE antibody and this IgE antibody whichever have been formed they will cause the release of they will cause the release of histamine and as well as leukotrienes right they will cause the release of histamines and leukotrienes now the histamines and as well as leukotrienes they are being released from the mast cells the histamines and leukotrienes they are being released from the mast cells right so this is what exactly is the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction type 1 hypersensitivity reaction it is mediated by IgE antibody or it is being characterized by the formation of IgE antibody so as and when this IgE antibody is being formed this IgE antibody will cause the release of the histamine and as well as the leukotrienes from the mast cells and these mast cells they play an important role in the inflammatory process in type 1 hypersensitivity reactions now these inflammatory mediators that is histamine and as well as leukotrienes 
whichever are being released from the mast cells, they will cause bronchoconstriction. Right? They will cause bronchoconstriction. And not only bronchoconstriction, these inflammatory mediators, they will also cause the inflammation of the airways. Right? These inflammatory mediators, they also cause the inflammation of the airways. So because of the inflammation of the airways, this will lead to what is called hyperreactivity of the airways. Right? So the airways in the patients with the bronchial asthma, they are very much hyperreactive. Now why do you think they are very much hyperreactive? Mainly because of the process of inflammation, which is being caused by the histamines and as well as leukotrienes. And these histamines and leukotrienes are they are released from the inflammatory cells that is mast cells. And why is this mast cells producing these histamines and leukotrienes? Whenever the mast cells are being bound by IgE antibody, then the mast cells they undergo degranulation and they will produce these particular inflammatory mediators which will cause bronchoconstriction, not only bronchoconstriction, even your the inflammation of these particular airways. Now, if you see this in bronchial asthma, now we are having two problems in bronchial asthma. One, there is bronchoconstriction and the second thing is the inflammation. These are the two important problems what the individual is facing in patients with bronchial asthma. Now, how will you treat these patients with the bronchial asthma? For the treatment of bronchial asthma, the drugs what you have to give is for this bronchoconstriction, whichever is happening, you have to give bronchodilators. Right? You have to give bronchodilators. Why? Because, because of this bronchoconstriction, the individual is having difficulty in breathing. The individual is having difficulty in breathing. So, in order to reduce the difficulty in breathing which is caused by bronchoconstriction, you have to give this bronchodilators. Next. The second thing, like what is the other problem in patients with bronchial asthma is the inflammation of the airways which is being caused by this mediators that is histamine and leukotrienes from the mast cells. Now, for the treatment of bronchial asthma, the other group of drugs what we require is, we require anti-inflammatory drugs. We require anti-inflammatory drugs. So if you give anti-inflammatory drugs and you give bronchodilators, then we can overcome bronchoconstriction and we can also overcome inflammation and thereby the difficulty in breathing can be reduced in patients with the bronchial asthma. Now, let me discuss what are those group of drugs which are required for bronchodilatation? What are those group of drugs which are required for the reducing inflammation which is nothing but the anti-inflammatory drugs. Firstly, you take bronchodilators. The bronchodilators, if you see here, we have sympathomimetic amines. Right, we have the sympathomimetic drugs which will cause bronchodilatation. And the second group of drugs, we have parasympathetic drugs. Parasympathetic group of drugs. And lastly, we have methyl xanthines. Right, lastly, we have methyl xanthines. So these are the three group of drugs which will cause bronchodilatation.